Hey, welcome to another video on permutations and combinations. Uh, and so in this video, we're going to discuss permutations, go over the formula, maybe do an example. Uh, we'll see, see where, where it takes us. Anyways, uh, so permutation. It is an arrangement of a set with a definite or specific order. So an example of something with a set, let me go get you something that has a set here. Um, okay, so here we go. We have crayons. We got five crayons, um, each one a different color in a specific order. Now this is a different uh, permutation than, say, this one. Okay, notice that in this one, they have all the same colors. All right, so all the same colors are there. However, the order is different. And as far as permu permutations go, these are different permutations. Now, why do we use permutations? Mainly when you're dealing with codes. You know, you don't want somebody to break into your, your uh, you know, we call it a combination lock, but it really is a permutation lock. You don't want somebody to break in. If your code is 1, 2, 3, and they type in, or they put in one, two, three, one. You know, this is a different permutation, and you don't want them to get in. Okay, so the different, same numbers but different order make a different permutation. All right, so here's our first question: How many permutations can be made using all five crayons? Now, in the previous video, we know how to do this using the task method. All right, since we're picking all five crayons, we're just putting them in different orders. Okay, we have five tasks. We have the first crayon, the second crayon, the third, the fourth, and then the fifth. And then each pick requires a certain number of ways it, uh, it can be completed. So when we f pick our first crayon, how many crayons do we have available to pick from? And in this case, it would be five. Now once you take that one crayon and you put it down, how many are available for the next pick? And that would be four. And then for the next pick would be three, then two, then finally when you pick your last crayon, well, there's only one crayon left, and it was, so it would be one way. Now the multiplication principle says that if you have separate tasks, you want to know how many ways all these tasks can be completed, you just multiply all them together. So the number of arrangements, you would just multiply these together. So it would be five, four, 3 times 2 times 1, and that would give you 120 ways. Okay, that's fine, uh, but let's now introduce the permutation formula, and let's see if we can use that to answer these questions. Okay, so the number of permutations of n distinct objects taken r at a time. All right, so that what we're saying is that we have n distinct objects. In a previous example, we had five crayons. And we're going to take however many at a time. In the last example, we took all five. So it would be five distinct objects taken five at a time. Now, the formula for the number of permutations, and you could, uh, you'll see it a couple different ways, but this is the way that I'll write it down right now, would be P, P for permutation, N, that tells you how many objects you have, R, how many objects you're taking at a time, and the formula is going to be N factorial over n minus r factorial. Now I'm sure you can find videos on the factorial. You can just Google that one. But that's the formula on how to find the number of permutations. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, well, here. Um, you might also see it like this. n p r, that's another way. And then in your, if you have a graphing calculator, you'll probably end up seeing this symbol in the graphing calculator as well. All right, so I'll, I'm will i not sure. I'll probably write it any any one of these ways. Okay, so let's go back to our previous example with the crayons and see, see what we get. So how many permutations can be made using all five crayons? So how many objects do we have to start with? Well, we have five objects to start with. And R represents how many are you going to be picking at a time. Now it's actually saying how many permutations can be made using all five crayons. So not only do we have five to start with, we're picking all five. 
All right, so the permutation formula could be written as 5p5. And so that's going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 5 factorial. So that's 5 factorial over 0 factorial. And let me come down here. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1. I hope that looks familiar from uh, you know about a minute and a half ago. And then divide that by, now 0 factorial is always 1. Okay, that's just by definition, 0 factorial is 1. And if you multiply all that stuff out, you get 120. Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's change this problem a little bit. And instead of taking all five crayons, let's take three of them. Okay, so notice I changed this now to three crayons. So how many permutations can be made using, I don't really need to say all three, just say how many permutations can be made using three crayons. All right, so again, you, you have to ask yourself, how many objects do you have to start with? And again, it's still five. How many are we picking at a time? That would be three. And so our number of permutations would be, and it would be P, and then we got five objects, picking three at a time. That's going to be five factorial over five minus three factorial. That's five factorial over two factorial. And then if you multiply all of this out, you know, in the top you'll get 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. In the bottom you get 2 times 1. You can see that the 1 and 2 cancel out. Left with 5 times 4 times 3, and that would be 60. So 60 ways. So not as many ways as if you were to use all 5 crayons, but that makes sense. You know, the more crayons you have, the more permutations you're going to be able to make. Okay, so now what I want to do is the same problem, but I want to use a graphing calculator because if some of you have one, you can be able to, you you should be able to use it. And you'll be able to find your answer a lot faster. Okay, so I've pulled out the graphing calculator, and all I want to do is show you how to find. Oops, and it disappeared. Uh, how to find the permutations given five objects, picking three at a time, using the calculator. So I need to pull that back up. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do first is you're going to you're going to type in how many objects you have, and we have five. Then what I want you to do is go to this math button here, and then scroll over to where it says PRB, and then down here option two, NPR. The P stands for permutations. So pick that one. So five, and then NPR, and then how many are you picking at a time? three and then just press enter and it should give us sixty and there you go so now I can find the number of permutations for a lot of things if I had say a hundred crayons and I want to pick oops, I don't know, pick twenty at a time how many ways can I do that that's very large it's very very large alright if um Let's try something a little smaller, maybe 20 crayons, and let's pick five at a time. Okay, that's a little smaller, but there you go. So it looks like about one million ways, if I just have a box of 20 crayons, picking five at a time, when order matters. Okay, very important. All right, I want to write that down again because it's extremely important. Order matters. All right, because this is going to be what deter or yeah what determines whether it's a permutation over a combination so you got to know how to identify whether order matters or not but anyways that's the end of the permutation section uh, in the next example we will go on to um, combinations